Hello everyone, in this video we will be covering how to factorize quadratics using the cross multiplication method. So we will use this method when this number over here, the a term, is not equal to 1 after taking out a common factor. So before attempting cross multiplication we need to know how to do these types of situations when this is a 1. So if you are unfamiliar on how to factorize quadratics when this is a 1 then you should go watch the um, factorizing simple quadratics video which I have already uploaded before you attempt cross multiplication. So now we will be looking at factorizing quadratics where this is a 2 or 3 or 4 or some other number that's not 1. Previously, factorizing quadratics required us to look at the last term and look at the factors of the last term that give me the middle number. Now we have this extra number over here. So now what we have to do is we have to look at the factors of the last term and the factors of the first term and the combination of those two together which give me the middle number. This is best illustrated with an example. Consider the following quadratic, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So now we're going to look at the factor combinations that we have for 3 and for 2. So the factor pairs that I have for 3 is only 1 and 3. And the pairs I have for 2 are only 1 and 2. So in a column, I'm going to write a factor combination of 2. So I have 2 and 1. And I'm going to write a factor combination of 3. So I will write 3 and 1. Now I'm going to do, as the method name suggests, cross multiply. So I'm going to put my cross in here and I'm going to multiply numbers that are on opposite ends. So 2 times 1 gives me 2 and 1 times 3 gives me 3. Now I'm going to use these numbers to make the middle number. Let's see, because of this negative as explained in the simple quadratics video, they need to be different signs. So for this combination to work, I must either have 3 minus 2 or 2 minus 3 give me my middle number. Now my middle number is plus 5 and neither of these give me plus 5. So this combination does not work. Now there is one more combination we can try. We can, instead of having a 3 here and a 1 here, we can instead have a 1 and a 3. This way, different numbers are getting multiplied together. Now let's see if this combination works. Multiplying opposite numbers, we end up with 1 times 1 gives me 1, and 2 times 3 gives me 6. Now, for this combination to work, we must have 1 minus 6 give me my middle number, or 6 minus 1 give me my middle number. And 6 minus 1 does give me positive 5, so this combination does work. Now, to get a positive 6 and to get a minus 1, I need this to be a minus 1. And for that to be a minus 1 in my multiplication, my minus would have to go there, and this would be a positive. So I ended up with 2 and 1 and minus 1 and positive 3. So we have found our combination that works. Now we'll see why we use cross multiplication instead of just regular multiplication in order to find out the 6 and the 1. Because these actually become my brackets. So this is the x column and this is just my regular number column. So my two brackets are actually 2x minus 1 and x, 1x, plus 3. So I end up with 2x minus 1, x plus 3 is equal to 0. And that is its fully factorized form. Now let's look at an example where we have more than two possible combinations of factors. Let's consider 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I need to consider factors of 6 and factors of 3 that are going to give me my middle number. So let's write out all the combinations that I could possibly have. So these are the four possible combinations I could have. I could have the factor combination of 6 and 1 for my 6 and 3 and 1 
or I can have 6 and 1 and 1 and 3. Then I can use my other combination for 6 as 3 and 2 and 3 and 1, or 3 and 2 and 1 and 3. Now we'll have to find out which ones work by doing the cross multiplication. So we have these answers once you do the cross multiplication. So we need to make a minus 7 and they need to be opposite signs. So let's see for our first one. For this combination to be correct, I need to have 3 minus 6 or 6 minus 3 equal to minus 7 because they need to be different signs. And this does not give me minus 7, so this is not a correct option. Let's look at the next option. We have 1 and 18. Those are not going to give me a minus 7. Let's look at the next one. We have a 6 and a 3. It's still not going to give me a minus 7. And let's see our last option. We have a 2 and a 9. So if I said 2 minus 9, I do get a minus 7. So 2 minus 9 does give me a minus 7. So this combination does give me my middle number, and I need a positive 2 and a minus 9 to do it. So 3 times 3 gave me 9. I need to make it a minus 9. So I'm going to put a minus in there. And this needs to be a positive, so that'll just be a positive. And now we have our two brackets that we are going to use. We will have this bracket, and we will have this bracket. So our answer will be 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. So we will have 3x plus 1 is my one bracket and 2x minus 3 is my other bracket. And that is fully factorized. So that is the point of doing it as a cross multiplication. So that once we find a correct factor combination, it is already done for us. We already have our brackets. Now we don't need to write out all our possible combinations, we just need to go through them until we find one that works and we can discard the rest of them. Only one will work. I hope you now all understand how to use the cross multiplication method to factorize quadratics. If you are unfamiliar about the basics of quadratics, please check out the factorizing simple quadratics video. Happy studying guys!